So, so I know you have a hard cap at 1130 your time. So before we kind of uh, wrap up, I wanted to ask you what, you know, I got a lot of questions about this. I've previously made videos on deep green and recently it, it was discussed that they're uh, looking for a SPAC with SOAC. And I was just wondering, have you, have you looked into deep green? Do you know much about their lithium extraction or their materials extraction? For context, they're mining polymetallic nodules at the bottom of the ocean floor. Uh, what do you think about this potential acquisition or company? Yeah, so so I'm I'm a little familiar with Deep Green. I I know some of the folks who who worked on on their project. I I don't have any contact with Deep Green, so my my perspective on this is very kind of virgin and you That's know great. just inter, internet contact. What I, I I am I am interested in what they're doing. I would say, and, and and just for context, so they're you know they're trying to like suck up these kind of like rocks of, of manganese, nickel, and cobalt at, at the bottom of the ocean, the clarion Clipperton belt in the in the Pacific kind of equatorial Pacific, kind of west of Mexico. And I'm interested in this because obviously we need the nickel and, and the cobalt. Um, it's, I think they're mostly manganese. I don't remember, but um, we, we, mm-hmm. we need manganese, but not maybe not all the manganese. So I don't know how exactly they're going to market their manganese. But, but, but my main contact with them was reading their life cycle assessment. So they, they put together a very professional LCA report, which they published, and I think it's available online, where they, they quantified their environmental impacts using best practice methodologies. And I, I think that was important because there, there's been kind of conversations around the risks associated with deep sea mining, right? Sucking up these, these nodules from the ocean floor, which potentially brings along with it, you know, other sediments or, or things that are potentially alive that, that could kill those things that are alive. So, so I think the LCA that they produced um, was very professional and, 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 and supportive of, of their kind of thesis about what they're trying to do. And so, so, so if it's between, you know, sucking up nodules from, from, from the middle of the Pacific versus, you know, tearing up rainforest in, in Indonesia or New Caledonia, right? You know, I, 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 I really don't have anything against deep sea ocean worms. I swear I don't. Right? <laughs> I, I like I, I think it is extremely important and valuable that we study their their biology, their biology and their physiology and, and identify like are there compounds in their skin that we can turn into medicine or whatever it may be. I'm 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 super attuned to that reality. But extraction and producing these materials that end up in our our lithium ion batteries and our Teslas or you know, or wherever we want to use them, your cell phone, mm-hmm. et cetera always carries environmental impact. Let me say that yep. again. <laughs> yeah. The production of materials that go into your batteries, whether it's your electric vehicle or your phone or whatever, always has environmental impact. The, the, the point is not to eliminate the environmental impact because you can't, you literally cannot, right? The point is to quantify and control and reduce the environmental impact. It is a minimization function. It is not a multiply by zero function. For sure. Right? So, so um, this is a great way to uh, reduce the environmental impact. So according it, to the LCA, it looks like it. Yes. So it, if I if I was to say this in in what I think are the best technical terms, according to their LCA for the impact categories that they quantified with with their with the consulting company that they did it with, there are impact reduction opportunities for deep sea mining compared to tearing up rainforest in Indonesia. Okay. In, in terms of bio, biodiversity and, and other impact categories. So, so totally agree. So, you know, I, I, I'm not, I don't think anyone cares about, about my approval of what they're trying <laughs> to do or not. Maybe someone does, but, but what I would say is like, that is, that is the right um, way to approach this question is, is to quantify and understand and, and compare, right? Totally. Because just because it's new doesn't mean it's bad. And I, I think it's really problematic that they faced a lot of resistance just because it's new and just because it hasn't been done before. You know, I don't know what what like planet people are scared of uh, the like, ocean, uh, mining people, in the ocean. Well, people but, are, uh, people so, are scared of mining the ocean, and I don't think that that is a super mature position. You know, I think it is a mature, smart position to say let's study the biology of the animals that live in the deep sea ocean. Hundred percent, like literally everyone's on board. But just being objectively against ocean. Mining, I think, is not is not the most mature kind of best way to think about it. For sure. So, so I have one last question. You know, I kind of wanted to get more into ba- your background, but but in in lieu of that, that that would take a little bit of time. I can, I, I can to- push my call back by fifteen minutes. 